It's the full story of life crushed into four minutes. The entirety of humanity in the palm of your hand crushed into one sentence. Listen, it's intense, right? God, our sins, paying everyone life. The greatest story ever told that's hardly ever told, God. Yes, God, the maker and giver of life. And by life, I mean any and all manner and substance, seen and unseen, what can and can be touched, thoughts, image, emotions, love, atoms, and oceans, God. All of it is handiwork, one of which is masterpiece, made so uniquely that angels look curiously. The one thing in creation that was made with his imagery, the concept so cold, it's the reason I stay bold, how God breathed in a man and he became a living soul. Formed with the intent of being infinitely, intimately fond, creator and creation held an eternal bond. And it was placed in perfect paradise till something went wrong. A species got deceived and started lusting for his job. An odd list of complaints as if the system ain't working and used that same breath he graciously gave us to curse him. And that sin seed spread through our soul's genome. And by nature of your nature, your species, you participated in the mutiny, our, yes, our sins. It's nature inherited, black in the human heart. It was over before it started. Deceived from day one and led away by our own lust. There's not a religion in the world that doesn't agree that something's wrong with us. The question is, what is it? And how do we fix it? Are we eternally separated from a God that may or may not have existed? But that's another subject. Let's keep grinding besides trying to prove God is like defending a lion, homie. It don't need your help. Just unlock the cage. Let's move on on how our debt can be paid. Short and sweet. The problem is sin. Yes, sin. It's a cancer. An asthma, choking out our life force, forcing separation from a perfect and holy God. And the only way to get back is to get back to perfection. But silly us, trying to pass the course of life without referring to a syllabus. This is us. Keep up your good deeds. Chant, pray, meditate. But all of that, of course, is spraying cologne on a corpse. Or you could choose to ignore it as if something don't stink. It's like stepping in dog poop and refusing to wipe your shoe, but all of that ends with how good is good enough. Take your silly list of good deeds and line them up against perfection, good luck. That's life past your pay grade. The cost of your soul, you ain't got a big enough piggy bank, but you could give it a shot. But I suggest you throw away the list, because even your good acts are an extension of your selfishness. But here's where it gets interesting. I hope you're closely listening. Please don't get it twisted. It's what makes our faith unique. Here's what God says is part A of the gospel. You can't fix yourself. Quit trying. It's impossible. Sin brings death. Give God his breath back. You owe him. Eternally separated. And the only way to fix it is someone die in your place. And that someone got to be perfect. Or the payment ain't permanent. So if and when you find a perfect person, get him or her to willingly trade their perfection for your sin and death in. Clearly, since the only one that can meet God's criteria is God, God sent himself as Jesus to pay the cost for us. His righteousness. His death functions as payment. Yes, payment. Wrote a check with his life, but at the resurrection we all cheered because that means the check cleared. Pierced feet, pierced hands, blood-stained son of man, fullness, forgiveness, free passage into the promised land. That same breath that God breathed into us, God gave up to redeem us. And anyone and everyone, and by everyone I mean everyone, who puts their faith and trust in him, and him alone can stand in full confidence of God's forgiveness. And here's what the promise is, that you are guaranteed full access to return to perfect unity by simply believing in Christ and Christ alone. You are receiving life. Yes, life. This is the gospel. God, our sins.